Hi, welcome to the program. My God, I missed you. Where have you been? What have you been doing? Oh my God. I tried to call you yesterday. I tried to text and tweet and twat you and I didn't get a response. What's going on? What's happening? I was so upset. I was so worried. But you're here now to listen to the show. So I guess everything's okay. You had no idea what I was going through yesterday. Wondering what happened to you. But now you're here. Everything's fine. Just don't put me through that again. Listen to the show on a daily basis. And then I'll know where you are. Thank you. I don't know how much more of this I can take. Ladies and gentlemen, my impression of being concerned about something. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Welcome to the Ron Van Dam Show. Hold on tight. Things can get a bit weird if you like that sort of thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whatever. Sit back, relax, grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever your liquid libation may be in the morning, and join us as we take a look at the world around us. As much as it's a pleasure to be with you, the pleasure is actually all yours. And now, here's your host, Ron Van Dam. Thank you, Julie. Welcome to the program. I am Ron Van Dam. That's true. I'll be spending a little bit of time with you, so you should make yourself comfortable. Remove some clothing, why don't you? That's what I do. My guest later on in the program is a very interesting guest. We're going to be talking about hair loss. Now, I'm not going to try to sell you anything, and neither will they. We're just talking about something that most Americans and people across the world go through. As you age, you start losing your hair. What's up with that? Not everybody. Italians don't. Italians have a full head of hair. I don't know what that is. It probably is a genetic thing. Probably. It also has to do with various uh, hair things going on. Oh, Ron, you're so informative. Various hair things going on. God, you should be a doctor. Anyway, we're going to speak to an expert. They do have something that uh, it's, it's yeah, that maybe this will help. So uh, there you go. Thinning hair, hair loss. You'll want to hear about this at the end of the show today. Toward the end of the show, I should say. Other than that, it's you and me. Um, let's go dancing. Right, never mind. I don't dance. Don't ask me. See, I'm six foot three inches tall. And when I go to a dance club, like I ever do, but even when I do, I have. I, I don't go to dance clubs. I'm dragged to dance clubs. Do you understand the difference? I'm like a beacon of schmuck. Uh, I can be seen above the heads of everybody else on the dance floor. So if you're looking out over the crowd, you'll see my shoulders and my head. Everybody else is shorter than me. So when I look goofy dancing, I'm highlighted. I am highlighted like one of those little yellow pens that you use to highlight words. My body is highlighted. Highlighted. Highlighted? What is? What kind of word is highlighted? Speaking of highlighted, uh, I, I'm, uh, 
I'm a school rebel. I, I hated school. I hated the entire school experience. I do to this day. I hate people that go to school. I hate people that don't go to school. Here's the problem with school. And I wish I was the school czar because I would change things up really big time. Here's some of the things I would do. First of all, kids go to school from nine to five. <gasps> Ron, what are you crazy? No, I'm not crazy. I'm sane. Nine to five, a shorter school year, nine to five. You start school the day after Labor Day. You end it in the middle of June, nine to five. You can have little weeks off every once in a while because you're putting in more time per day. So you can have little breaks throughout the, uh, the school year. Nine to five. Why do I say that? For a couple of reasons. First of all, the parents, God love the parents, man. They gotta, they've got to work nine to five themselves. Then they got to make arrangements for somehow to get their kid safely home at a time you're still two hours away from even, even getting out of work yourself. Now, the school, the school day has to coincide with the work day for parents. Look, schools are not babysitters, but you know what? They are. That's number one. It makes it easier for the parents. Maybe people will stay married and save some money on child care and making arrangements with neighbors stopping by and kids doing drugs in their bedrooms because the parents aren't home yet. Come on, let's get it on. Nine to five. Number two, when kids graduate from school, they're going to be going on to a schedule that is, guess what, nine to five. Yeah, they're going to have to get jobs. They better. Most of them will. What are, how, what are the durations? It's nine to five. Let's get into it. Let's get used to it. School is not what you learn. It's the discipline you pick up from it. You must prepare yourself for what you're going to be doing for the next 20, 30, 40 years. It's going to be 9 to 5. So let's get into it. Not a nursery school necessarily, although I have no problem with that. Kindergarten, that's a long day for a little child. We don't want to, we don't want to stress the little children too much. But first grade and on through high school, 9 to 5. That's number two. Uh, number three and through 72 are the same ones uh, as far as points are concerned. That's the first thing I would do. School, nine to five. The next thing I would do, no more homework. No more homework. Stupid. Stupid. Why should a kid go to school all day from nine to five and then work three, four hours at home Doing the same stuff on their own. No. 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 You can assign homework if you want, but don't make it so involving. Let the kid have a life. Let the kid go home and play with their friends or play some video games or annoy their parents. Have some dinner. Relax. Play with the dog. Throw a ball for the dog. I mean, you know, let them rest. Let them rest. They'll make them do homework. They've been doing work all day. What if you had a 9-to-5 job and your boss said, Look, uh, I'm going to pay you from 9-to-5. I'm not going to pay you after 5, but I want you to go home and do work. What are you talking about? You're not paying me to do work. Well, what's the homework then? No homework. You know, Stop it. Don't grade me on, on what I'm doing at home. Are you serious? That's the time for the parents to get more involved with their children. That's parent and child time. That's a bond that has to be worked on. You're both out of the house for the whole day. So for the evening, you need to bond. Not to sit in the corner and do homework. Spend some time with your family. Screw your friends. Spend some time with your family, with your mother and your father, if that's the case. Family time. Play a board game. Play Scrabble. Learn something from your parents for a change. No homework. I would, I would stop homework immediately. Homework is stupid. Now, people say, Ron, in other cultures, you know, 
that educational process goes on all year round. Yeah, all right, we're not in other places, okay? We're far inferior. So let's just keep it that way. <laughs> Rule number 17. What? How'd you get to 17? I don't know. Something's wrong with this recording, I guess. You must have missed something. Rule number 17, no cell phones in school. No cell. They go in your locker. They go in your locker. They get locked up. You can't carry them around the classes. You can't have a cell phone in your class. It's a distraction. Now, of course, in many schools across the country, that is the rule. You can't have a cell phone in a classroom. But in many schools throughout the country, it's okay. What? How can it be okay? Why would you create distractions for a child? As I said at the beginning of this conversation, school is not what you learn in the classroom. It's the discipline that you gain. Let's have classes, uh, uh, rule number number 27. Ron, what happened to, 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 to what are you talking about? No, I don't know where you've been. I don't know. You must have passed out. I'm on 27. Rule number 27, start teaching courses that actually make sense to kids when they get become an adult. An entire course on how to balance a checkbook, how to write checks. Ron, people don't write checks anymore. They just scan things. All right, then, a class on scanning. How about a class on computers? Because every kid's got to have one. You have to know how to navigate yourself through the Internet and the dark web. How about a class on that? How about a class on mortgages? What's a mortgage? How does that work? What's a good idea with a mortgage? What do you, how do you do that? What do you, what's a, how do you figure out mortgage? How, what's compound interest? How do you figure that out? How about investing? Kids don't have money. Why would they want to invest? Yes, but when they grow older, they may get some money. Then what do they do? They didn't learn anything about it. How to raise a child. A class on how to raise a child. Because 90% of these kids are, 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 are going to have a child somewhere. Male or female, you're going to be a mother or a father probably, whether you wanted to be or not. What do you do? How do you raise them? What's the deal? Do they teach that in school? A little bit, but not enough because everybody goes through it. It's not deep enough. It's got to be complete. This is what you do with a child. This is how you raise a child. This is the amount of time you spend with a child. This is how you handle a crying baby. Let Teach them that. Teach them that. They're going to need to know that for sure. For sure. Come on. Let's get with it. Let's start teaching kids things, how to mow a lawn. How do you mow a lawn? Uh, do, do, do you mow on an angle, straight across? Every kid's going to have to mow a lawn at one point in their life. How do you mow a lawn? How do you start an engine? How do you pour gasoline into an engine? Well, I don't know. How do, how do you change your oil? Well, I don't know. We don't change our oil, but you should know how to do it. Teach kids things that they need to do. Here's a screwdriver, Phillips, flathead, let's get on it. Let's start unscrewing things in class. Physical education? What the hell is that about? What are you talking about? Physical education? Keep moving around. What are you talking about? Why would you make a kid go to a locker room during a school day, change into a t-shirt and shorts, get all sweaty and perspiry, Shower with other kids so you can see their private parts as well and compare yours to theirs. Then get dressed again and, and do some more schoolwork. What? You're screwing me up, man. You're screwing me up. I'll get my exercise when I get home. That's not your business. Your business is to educate me, not to throw balls at me, not to make me climb ropes. What is that? That's not education. That's, that's parent stuff. That's not school stuff. I, you, 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 you educational people got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. Rule number 72, as I change the educational system, I understand that there are teacher unions and all that kind of stuff. Um, here's, here's the deal. Don't, don't, don't fire teachers. This tenure thing, I, I guess, is all right to an extent. But um, let's train teachers to be better teachers. And that doesn't mean give them more education, because that doesn't matter either. Make yourself more interesting. If you're a teacher, make yourself more interesting. You don't have to dress up like George Washington to run a history class, although 
it would be interesting, psychologically interesting, <laughs> as we watch you at the head of the class falling apart psychologically, just use different intonations in your voice. Speak. Teachers need to go through public speaking courses. I've seen some teachers, I've had some teachers in, 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 my, in my childhood who just stand at the front of the class and say, George Washington was born on a Saturday. He had wooden teeth. He crossed the Delaware and in a boat. He stood there, and on the other side, he led the troops. To- oh, stop it. Make it interesting. Change your voice a little bit. The highs and the lows. Walk around. Do something that's interesting to a child. Look, look interested yourself. You should appear interested. You should appear into what you're talking about. Make it interesting for the child. They're children. They don't know it. It's not interesting to them. It's not interesting to me as an adult. Make it interesting. Do not stand in front of the class and rattle off words. Get out. Pack your bags if you're going to do that. Teachers need to be taught how to be interesting, how to speak in front of crowds. How to stand in front of a classroom and make what you say somewhat interesting. Doesn't mean you have to take your pants off, although that would be interesting. I don't know what the problem is here. Sex education in the classroom? Go for it. Most of these people in your classroom, by the age of like in one hour, will be having sex with somebody while they're in school. Let's be honest about it. Let's do some sex education that really is sex education. Stand up in front of the classroom and say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're going to talk about penetration. What? You can't do that. I have to do it because that's what it is. How do you please the other person? Open lines of communication. What do you want done to you with my tongue? Let's make it real. Education. Oh, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I think I need a cigarette. I don't even smoke, but I think I need a cigarette. Mm. You are listening to the Ron Van Dam Show, and that gets you a podcasting high five. It's like a regular high five. But no one knows that you did it, or cares, or anything, really. Let's talk about hair loss. (laughs) Whoa, Ron, you're blowing my mind. (laughs) Calm down. As most of us will experience sex at some point in our lives, we will also experience some form of hair loss. I'm always surprised that uh, the hair on top of our heads is the hair that we start losing. All the other hair is as healthy as hell. Why can't I lose hair under my arms? Who would care? I just wear long sleeve shirts. (laughs) I've seen, I've seen hairy men with like, they, they, their bodies are like gorillas. They, They, there's hair coming out of their breasts, even growing on their back upstairs on their head bald bald i don't get it i don't get it's like it's like god is like looking down going hey you screw with me huh you screw with me this is what's gonna happen i i don't get it i don't get it there's no explanation for this so i turn to an expert to find out like what what what's going on here as we get older we start losing our hair and there are other Another instance is that you can lose hair for other reasons as well. And if you don't lose your hair, thinning hair is pretty much just as bad, especially for a woman. Men can walk around bald. It happens. We see it every day, everywhere. Bald-headed women? No, not a lot. They wear wigs. Do men wear wigs? No, no. If they did, it would be very, very obvious. It's interesting how a man wearing a wig or a toupee is spotted in a second. Hey, look at that guy over there. If that's not a toupee, I will eat my mother. All right, weird example, but I get it. 
You don't do that with a woman. If she's wearing a wig, A, you may have no idea, and B, you have no idea. For some reason, men can't get away with anything anymore. There's no, there's no, don't even try. You're going to look stupid if you try even. If you're a woman, you can get away with anything. They wear makeup, my God. If they have a blemish on their face, they wear foundation. That's like what you put a house on. They pour concrete on their face, and they, their skin looks wonderful. Men, you can't put a foundation on your face. You can't wear makeup. You'll be drummed out of the, of, of the human race. No, it's not fair. Women are put on pedestals. They are admired, adorned, gawked at, loved, desired. Men, pff, whatever, whatever. Just shut up, shut up, and shut up. Shut up and fix my car. <laughs> shut up and change that light bulb. I, that's, you know, men are utilitarian. Women are everything. And that may sound very sexist, but I don't think anybody's going to argue with that. Can a woman do everything a man can do? Yes. Can a man do everything a woman can do? Yes. We're, we're so equal, it's not funny. The only difference between a man and a woman is strength sometimes, not always, and breast size. And I guess that little area between your legs differs somewhat. Beyond that, no, we're all just human beings with functioning organs. Now, how does this have anything to do with hair loss? What, what happened here? What happened? Anyway, uh, let's speak to the expert because uh, this is getting crazy. <laughs> Hello, Amy. Hi, Ron. Dr. Amy Heaton joins us now. She serves as head of the product development for one of the largest developers of cosmeceuticals. There's a word I never heard before. Uh, she has an extensive background. We're, we're talking about uh, hair loss, which I think everybody is interested in, especially men, but women as well, certainly. And this, this has been the biggest problem of our cosmetic uh, world forever, uh, Indeed. yeah. And, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a difficult deal. It really makes a difference in your, in your life, your attitude, your, your personality. And, uh, I hope you can help us out here. First of all, why do people actually lose their hair? Is this simply an age thing? Yeah. So there's a lot of underlying factors and certain people are more predisposed and there's definitely a genetic component, mm -hmm. but it's basically ubiquitous. So everyone will experience some form of um, air, ha hair thinning yes. um, just with age. Yep. Okay. Uh, typically there's, there's been nothing you can do about it. There's been this Rogaine stuff. If you want to put cream on your head for the rest of your life and uh, I guess you can put a wig on, but everybody knows you got a wig on. It becomes obvious. see that's yeah. the problem. If things become obvious, then you look sillier than 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 you even did before. If you thought you did, uh, short right. of accepting the fact that you have hair loss, it's it it uh, again. What do you do about it? I mean, is is there an answer to this? Yes, well, so hair um, is only alive in the follicle. So we have follicles um, all throughout our scalp. Yeah. Um, and the hair that we see is no longer living, right? Right. So that the first sign of thinning or graying of the hair, the first thing you want to do is prevent that from accelerating, mm -hmm. right? So whatever our, the hand that we're dealt, things like stress, even nutrition, you know, getting enough protein, vitamins mm -hmm. and minerals mm -hmm. are all things that we can do to stay it off. And even the way that we treat our hair and style the hair. Yeah. Um, and then I've actually been working on uh, some research on a new compound. It's called Chromaviv that has now made available um, a dietary supplement that delivers keratin, which is the protein that our follicles use to make the hair, uh -huh. as well as melanin. But normally these compounds aren't bioavailable. So it's a new patented process that now allows it to be bioavailable orally. So we can take this supplement 
and actually deliver those nutrients and stay off, mm. again, whatever hand that we're dealt with with this new research. Huh. Um, d- d- does this work rather quickly, or is it something that happens over a period of time? So hair growth is just a slow process in general, right? So our, I know, our hair grows about a half an inch per month, but that's on average, and you know, and that's kind of in, in our 30s, yeah. um, and it can decrease significantly, and there's a lot of variability in that, um, but uh, that's why, you know, you want to take a supplement, and so the product's called Cerevital Hair Regenerous, yes. um, and that's something you want to do on a regular basis, and that's going to, you know, increase the growth phase of existing hair, mm-hmm. again, incorporate um, these nutrients, the keratin, um, the melanin. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also, uh, is, it's a two-part system, so there's a serum, which is a spot treatment, that again, you're going to get a little bit more targeted results and really see, um, you know, mm-hmm. fuller hair immediately, mm-hmm. but that being said, you know, you're still... Um, working on this timeline of hair growth. Yeah. So one thing that we can do, you know, the first line of defense is to just lose less of what we have. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, the, there's a rooting um, uh, ability of the complex. So we're actually seeing with continued use up to 46% less hair fall. Okay. Um, that occurs just because of the rooting. But some other things, you know, is styling. So if we wash our hair all the time, when the hair is wet, it's more elastic and it's more susceptible to breakage. Okay. So washing the hair more often, brushing it, um, and then heat treatment, you know, blow drying, um, heat styling can all damage the hair. And then yeah. you lose more hair and it breaks from the, the bottom up. So it's kind of, you want to address losing less and all the things that yeah. um, go into that as well as kind of growing younger hair. So don't wash your hair as much. Yeah. All right. Good. I like but, that. But, you know. I'm too busy. <laughs> uh, well, I was going to say, you know, it's a cosmetic issue, but there are dry shampoos. There are yeah, things, that, right. root boosters that, yeah. that can be used to, you know, to, to stay that off and still have the yeah. hair looking fresh and nice. I think we're uh, these days most concerned about safety. Uh, there are a lot of products that have been on the market, and then they turn out after a while to be actually more damaging than they were before. Uh, is 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 this is this safe to use? Absolutely, and and I like that you brought that up because uh, so Cerevital Hair Regenerous is completely drug free. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're taking compounds that are naturally available and just optimizing them for the body. But it's really nutrients for the hair. But instead of just being a multivitamin, yeah. um, which, of course, it's important to have vitamins, but having excess doesn't really help. Yeah. Um, so, you know, on top of having, you know, good uh, nutrition, protein in the diet, vitamins and minerals, this is a food nutrient that is so specific to hair follicles that yeah. we see this dramatic improvement, but it's completely drug-free, so you don't get the side effects that come yeah. with that. Uh, I, I, I have a friend, or it could even be me. Whenever you, someone says, I have a friend, you figure, ah, it's you, it's <laughs> you. Uh, they were selling this Either stuff, way. yeah, uh, this, this like laser thing that you like very slowly... Yep. You know, do over your head. And I looked in the, uh, you know, I looked, I, I, it was me actually. And I looked in the mirror once and I said, yeah. this is silly. <laughs> this, this is absurd. I don't know if it's doing anything, but it doesn't seem like this is going to work. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, p- I, literally people are looking for every day of their lives. They're looking for something that will either stop the process or actually regrow a little bit. Yeah. No, I mean, Americans spend upwards of a billion dollars per year on hair loss treatments. I mean, it is nearly ubiquitous. And, you know, some of these light treatments can have some effect. Um, It'll, you know, anything that stimulates circulation or can just kind of activate the cells. But again, you know, you're wearing this huge thing. And so, you know, what I like about Cerevital Hair Regenerous is Mm. most people take a multivitamin or or something. So if you just incorporate and say, okay, this is, you know, my morning, you know, supplement, just take it with that. And then a serum, it's like, well, every time that I would style my hair, I can apply this you know, on a regular basis That's or right easy. before bed. It's easy stuff. And, and then you can just incorporate it and you don't have another step that yeah. needs to be done. Now, is this $2 million? Is that the cost, $2 million? $2 million. Uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, indeed. No, you can go. So if you want to learn more about, you know, this, this new research in, in science, you can go to cerevitalhair.com okay. and it'll redirect right. there right. and you can get pricing and everything. <laughs> funny. Uh, I, I mean, I never did this, but I did have a friend that went to this hair club thing, 
and they quoted uh-huh, prices yep. and they went, wow, I got a second mortgage my home to, to do yeah. this. It was crazy, man. You know. Yeah. Well, and some of those are, are surgery. So, you know, yeah, what happens is yeah. eventually the follicles die off. Yeah. And if you have sort of a, a shiny spot that, you know, if there's no follicles to activate, really the only steps you can take are these surgeries and, yeah. and they're extensive and they're expensive. So that's why I always say preventative first, you know, the first sign, even if, you know, you're young and just say, Hey, I want to keep my follicles healthy. Yeah. Again, this is nutrition that can be delivered. So start early is the best advice I can yeah. get there. You know, if if only it wasn't on the top of our heads, this wouldn't be so. If, you know, if you lose, if you lost a uh, uh, underarm hair, okay. That's fine. <laughs> no, is, no one would worry too no much. No way, but this is out in the open, my God, and you can't wear a hat anymore. People don't wear hats yeah. anymore unless you're at a baseball game. Otherwise, mm-hmm. you can't do that in the office. All right, Amy. Uh, this has been uh, very, uh, very, it's nice to know that there are possibilities. Yeah. All right. Uh, how do we get more information about this? Yeah, so like I said, cerevitalhair.com uh, will direct you. So it's S-E-R-O-V-I-T-A-L, hair, all one word, dot com. Um, and you can look up the research, the before and afters, everything on this, and even tips um, just uh, to get more information. If someone's interested, could you actually get this uh, in the stores now? Um, we're, it's a brand new launch. This is yeah. um groundbreaking research and it's actually the only product that's licensed in North America to have this technology. Right. So right now the best place to go is online but we will be rolling out Very cool. um, into distribution. Doctor, thank yeah. you so much uh, today. This is uh, cool. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Ron. Take care now. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. I could have hair growing out of my nose. I already do. Sorry, I don't know that. Well, you should. Uh, I could have hair growing out of my ears at any moment. Oh, actually, I already do. Why is hair growing places that you don't want it to be? I'm not interested in having lush hair coming out of my nose. I don't want to be combing my nose hair and styling it with a the hair dryer. Doesn't make sense. All right, what does though? What does? Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I owe you. Not really. It's something you say to be polite. Join me again tomorrow for a brand new show. I'm looking forward to it. Don't put me through this again, please. Just show up tomorrow and everything will be fine. Thank you. I wish you peace. Peace.